Well, hello again sports fans. This is the maiden flight of my new Valantix Ranger 1600mm FPV platform. This is my second Ranger. The first one went in pretty hard last week and uh, it's just a little bit too beat up to bother about trying to repair. For this build I've decided to bring the radio receiver and the video transmitter inboard from the wings where I normally put them and house them all within the fuselage. I've also decided to move away from my usual Cyclops Tornado flight controller and try the new Matic F405 wing board. For me the main attraction of the Matic board is the integration of the flight controller, the OSD the power distribution all into one simple package which makes for a very very clean build. The board comes preloaded with iNav version 1.9 which I have since updated to iNav version 2. This will be my first venture into the iNav universe and I'm a little bit nervous about it. I've followed the development for a while but I've always been a little bit concerned that there's just too many knobs to twiddle with on it. On the plus side though, the iNav configurator makes the job of programming it relatively simple and for this maiden flight I've just gone with the default settings for a fixed wing aircraft. I've set up some flight modes which I hope will replicate what I'm used to having on the Cyclops Tornado and I'm about to test them out. Apologies for the lower than usual quality of speech but I've just had some dental work done and I'm lisping even more badly than usual. Our chief flying instructor Heath has agreed to give me a hand launch which I think is always a good idea for a maiden flight and I've taken off in manual mode which gives me 100% rate over all of the control services so things might get a little bit twitchy it's immediately apparent that she wants to go fairly heavily to the right so I start keying in a bit of left trim in the ailerons and it's not long before I use all that up and I have to add a few clicks of rudder to get it to, to fly relatively level. I'm flying on the stock 1400 kV motor with a 5200 mAh 3F battery. She balances out just slightly in front of the CG mark from the wing, but from the way she's flying I reckon that she's a little bit on the tail heavy side. I do manage to get her trimmed enough to the point where I can take my hand off the stick since she still flies relatively straight and level so I decide that's good enough to uh, start testing out some of the flight mode. I'm flying the maiden line of sight even though I do have the uh, video screen set up and I'm watching the uh, data being displayed on the OSD as I go. So I decided to take it up to around about 130 metres before clicking the first switch. And the first mode I want to test is the equivalent of uh, heading and altitude hold mode, which I think I know is now calling cruise mode. So I flick the switch and I'm pleased to see the mode change from manual to 3 CRF, which I assume means 3D cruise. I'm expecting to see the plane continue to travel on a straight heading and maintain altitude but uh, that's not what actually seems to happen. It maintains altitude but starts executing a left hand circle about a point in space. I'm wondering if this is the result of the left hand trims that I've put in and I start applying some uh, right hand aileron to see if I can straighten it up but it really seems to frighten me. It does eventually end up going right but very reluctantly. And as soon as I let go of the sticks it resumes its left hand circle. I watch it for a while and it's very stable in both the uh, heading and the altitude that it's maintaining. So 
it's clearly doing something it's supposed to be doing, it's just not what I thought it was going to do. I decided to put it back into manual and fly a little bit closer to the flight box and put it back into cruise mode to see if it exhibits the same behaviour again. And, not entirely surprisingly, it does. It goes straight into the left hand circle about the uh, new point. So, he said I sit back and watch it for a while, just making sure that it's uh, maintaining the altitude and maintaining the uh, circle. So, it's behaving exactly as I would expect the tornado's loiter mode to behave. But I had actually set up a specific loiter mode which was a combination of altitude hold and position hold mode. So I decided to uh, switch it into that mode just to see how that differed from uh, what cruise mode was doing. As it turned out it was quite different. It did seem to be holding position, but the uh, throttle variations and altitude variations uh, were really uh, quite dramatic. And I don't know that I'd really call the path it was taking a circle or even a figure eight, it just seemed to be all over the place. When I was uh, setting up iNav, I had increased the maximum roll angle from 20% to 40% and it certainly seemed to be using every bit of that in this mode. I was pretty glad that I'd taken the ringer up to altitude before testing these modes out. It would have been pretty scary closer to the ground but at this height I was happy to let it run its course and it never looked like it was uh, going to uh, cost me a plane. It was just very erratic in the way that it was moving around the field. So once it became apparent that it wasn't going to uh, improve or change I switched it back into manual and then back into uh, cruise mode to see if that was going to exhibit the same behaviour again. And it did. Everything calmed down. It uh, maintained a nice steady altitude and a steady circle so it looks like cruise is my new loiter mode. So I just sat back and watched it going around for a while and I'm pretty pleased with it as a loiter mode it's just uh, I'm sure when I go back and look at the docker I'll find out why it isn't behaving as I wanted it to but uh, as I said, as a loiter mode, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the way this is behaving. So, the only other mode I'd set up was return to home mode, so I'll wait until uh, the circle goes as far away from me as it's going to and then switch it into return to home mode to see what's going to happen there. So she turns around pretty well straight away and starts heading back. But she seems to be flying anything but a straight course. And uh, the throttle's going up and down and the uh, altitude's going up at a fairly consistent rate. As far as I was aware I'd set the return home to uh, maintain the altitude that it was at when I switched it in and to arrive home and circle at a hundred meters. But it's clearly trying to gain more altitude here. And that may be the cause of the uh, weaving backwards and forwards. It's probably in some sort of a stall because I don't have a real lot of throttle uh, applied at this point. Once it gets up to 200 metres of altitude, everything seems to uh, steady down. So it seems to be flying a, a straighter course without that uh, weaving backwards and forwards. And the current draw drops by a couple of amps as well. 
So clearly I need to revisit the return to home settings that I've uh, entered and uh, figure out why it's gone wrong. So when she arrives home she goes into loiter and it's really nice to see that written across the screen. But uh, once again the throttle starts surging up and down and um, the bank angle is quite steep so again that might be related to my messing around with the uh, upping it from 20% to 40%. So I watch it for a while and it doesn't get any prettier. It's still fairly erratic with the throttle and the uh, bank angle. But it doesn't appear to be in any danger of falling out of the sky. I'm fairly certain it's just the result of the settings I've put in for the uh, loiter radius and the bank angle and it just needs a bit of tuning. I'm happy enough that it's working. So I decided to have one more go at cruise mode to see if it is at all suitable for uh, flying around with some manual inputs but I muck around for a little while but I never really feel like I've got much control over it at all whereas as a loiter mode it seems to be absolutely perfect so again I need to get back to the manual and uh, have a look at uh, what I've done wrong. So I had actually set up one more uh, mode position on my switches which is currently set to uh, altitude hold mode. So I switch into that just to see uh, what it's doing. And it seems to be fairly consistent. Not very exciting so I just have a couple of circuits of that and then decide it's probably time to uh, bring the ranger in for a landing and see how she, uh, she's performing in manual. So, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way things have gone today. The ring is flying reasonably well, even though I think moving the FPV gear to the fuselage has made it a bit tail heavy. I was hoping that not have to cart around a bunch of BECs and current sensors and uh, filters would uh, make the rang out light enough to perform a bit better on 3S but I'm now thinking that I, I might upgrade to a 4S system just to get a little bit more authority in the air. As far as INAV goes I must admit to being uh, pretty happy with this as a first effort given the uh, almost complete lack of knowledge I have about the system. Clearly I'll need to do a lot more reading but uh, I've got enough encouragement after today to make that not such a, a huge chore. Anyway we will see how it goes in the future.